studies as likely as lively as you are supposed to be in the class let's continue our journey of very important interesting and uh, peculiar members of angiosperms who by simple observations cannot be added cannot be included or cannot be considered as angiosperms as such well in last two lectures we have studied two families one was magnoliaceae and another was nymphaeaceae obviously magnoliaceae was a tree uh, habit and nymphaeaceae was an aquatic habit but both were dicots both were showing the typical nature of angiosperm so obviously they were having the perianth lobes calyx corolla and prosium gynecium they were having the typical dicot gotlinus leaf and many other other characters in sy and ty we have studied several families of dicots and monocots and including apetale also for according to bentham and hooker and in ty bs also we have studied almost more than 10 to 15 families so we are representing this family again which has come back from ty bs i suppose you have studied this family in ty bs and today Uh, we are focusing now on one more interesting family and this family is family cajuranaceae cajuranaceae that way this plant is or this family is not belonging to india this family is actually of south uh, southern origin a southern hemisphere origin and it has originated somewhere in the polynesia and australia so it's very small family cajuranaceae a xerophytic family a dry family it is showing all characters of xerophytes there are got only two genera cajurina and uh, gymnostoma and in all total they are having almost 65 species which have been spread in this southern uh, world a uh, very interestingly in india <coughs> this family is represented by a monogenic and monospecies representation that is it has got only one species one genus and one species and that is cajurina equisetii folia oh, again is a xerophytic tree uh, i suppose each and every one knows this plant because when i have seen these plants in the gardens they have seen this plant along the roadside they have seen the plants in the form of avenues and uh, we generally call this plant as a suru in marathi it's a very tree it's large tree sometimes even this tree is available in a small in the form of a small shrub but basically as a natural habitat it is a xerophytic evergreen tree uh, which is lasting for more than at least more than 30 to 40 years so the beauty of this plant is that what we see as a leaves they are not the leaves here this plant contains two type of stem stem of a limited growth and stem of unlimited growth so obviously unlimited growth means the one axis which is going straight and at every nodal region it is providing or it is protruding out the stem of a lim limited growth and that is called a phylloclade so it is having the ridges and furrows and it is having again the nodes and internodes and this is the green in color so what we see green color or green leaf like structure it is not a leaf but it is a stem that's why the stem is green it is photosynthetic and it is showing the ridges and furrows which is very similar from morphological point of view it is very similar to the structure of equisetum i suppose uh, you peter people have studied the equisetum in uh, sy and ty bsc it was there in sy bsc So the equisetum is also showing the ridges and furrows on its surface of a thallus. And very interestingly, it also shows the presence of sunken stomata. So because of this typical character, here the leaves are highly reduced. They are scaly, they are dry, and they are non-photosynthetic. Whereas the function of photosynthesis is undertaken by the stem. 
beliefs, they are correlated at the base and they are surrounding at the each node. So why we are studying the Kajuranesi? Because the Kajuranesi family, as far as the Dipod family, it is showing the highest range of reduction in characters. So this is showing the evolution through reduction. Still so far we have seen that from the primitive families how the evolution has taken place of what we call the progressive evolution. And from this progressive evolution the, compli the complicated structures, the complex structures evolved. Slowly these complex structures they became so complicated, so complex that it became difficult for the plant to cope with the situation, to continue with journey. And so they started their further evolution by making and removing these complex structures and making the structure simple. So this is called as a reversible evolution. And that's why we are very much, uh, in, uh, we are very much interested to study this family because this Kajuran is a family, it shows the most simple characters. The leaves, they are present in the form of scales. The stem, it is of a limited growth and it is green in color. And the most important character is that this Cajurnese belongs to unisexual group. But the flowers are unisexual. So you know well that angiosperms are getting deferred by all other groups like uh, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperms. Because in all these cases, the main talus is always unisexual. The sporangia, they are unisexual. On the contrary, angiosperms themselves, they were having a specific structure and they were having that specific, what we can call it is a reproductive organ, which were having both the sexes together. And that's why the flowers of angiosperm generally it is bisexual. We are saying that almost 95% uh, of the species, uh, families are bisexual. They are having the flowers bisexual. But here, in Cajun, the flowers are unisexual. At least male flower is separate and female flower is separate. Obviously, the plants are monoecious or dioecious. That is, both male and female flowers, they are born on the same plant. Generally, these flowers, they are born in the axils of the nodes. Obviously, because of that again, these flowers, they are very small and they are incomplete. So they do not contain all the floral parts. For example, in a typical flower of the angiosperm, we know that it is containing the calyx, corolla, androsium and dionysium. In this case, in family Cajuranesi, the flowers are incomplete. Means they do not contain the calyx and corolla, but they contain the perianth or even the perianth is absent. And then they may contain either only the stamen or only the carpel. It is if the male flower is there, it will contain the stamen. If the female flower is there, it will contain the carpel. Now you have seen this plant, just I have shown some close-ups. On your left side, you can see what is known as a catkin. Catkin means uh, sorry, this, this is on the on the left side. You can see the female flower. On, on the contrary, you can call it the female uh, inflorescence, not the flower. Inflorescence, and this inflorescence is called the head. You can see it's a compact head which is present. And similarly, on the right side, you can see the male flower. Now, this male flower it is known as a catkin. The male flower is known as a catkin. Now, you can see in the right slide the scaly leaves which are present in the form of a whorl around the central step and it is showing the equisitum like stem character which is green and photosynthetic. The same structure you can see in both the figures. So, this is a sort of an arrangement both are obviously axillary in position, male flower and female flower. There is male inflorescence and female inflorescence. Now, as I told you that 
it shows all the types of zeropathic characters you can see a section of the stem now it is showing a very thick cuticle i'm talking about the ts of the stem now it is showing a bit uh, stem in the sense this is a section of a limited growth that is a green phylloclade this is a section of a green phylloclade so it is having a thick cuticle then it is having a bark below that you can see it is not a single layer epidermis but it is multi layered epidermis and this multi layered epidermis it is showing the ridges and furrows and in between this furrows from the kadde in this furrows you can see the ciliate hairs are present and in this ciliate hairs the stomata are embedded that is the stomata are embedded in the furrows and they are sunken stomata so you can see lot of zanum tissue lot of sclerenchyma this tissue lot of woody tissue is seen vascular bundles obviously they are scattered they are showing the secondary growth and in the center we can have a large we can have the vascular bundle very compact and dense vascular bundle and a very small pitch so you can see from outside the, uh, from the outside you can see the photosynthetic zone and uh, at the center you can see the pitch some of the section details they have been given below now these are some of the hand sketches which have been made by the artist of the male and female flower now what they represent and how they represent i will discuss uh, in our next slide now in the right side corner you can see a section of a limited growth that is stem which is showing the bearing of the male flowers that is it is a vertical slide or vertical section which is showing the bearing of male flowers so the male flower is represented by a single stamen you can see the stamens are present on its surface which have come up and similarly on the corner of the left side you can see the female flower a female inflorescence which is showing very large number of free stigmas now how they are represented we will be discussing in our next lecture uh, next night now very interestingly in casuarinaceae when we talk about the floral characters the male flowers they are represented in an inflorescence which is drooping it is not straight and here the male flowers they are always sessile in nature and because of that this inflorescence is called as a spike in general but in this case as the flowers are unisexual the flowers are incomplete and the flowers are sessile because of that this has got a specific name and that's why in casuarinaceae you see the male flowers they are called as a catkin inflorescence that is male flowers are born on a catkin inflorescence that is they are drooping they atkin inflorescence is either terminal or axillary or at the tip of the branches now these uh, male flowers now when we talk about the male flower these male flowers they are born in a woody single pair of bract so the bract is present it is very hard it is woody and in this woody bract the male flowers are born now each male flower also it has got a single pair of bracteole at the center again it is conate and it is arranged uh, laterally towards each other then it has got two small periambulum that is periambulum they are almost absent alessian corolla is also absent but the perianth also is absent and they are present in the form of a small rudimentary lobes but very importantly what it contains that it contains a single solitary stamen and this stamen it comes out of the bracteoles it comes out of the flower and it is hanging and because of that the male flower generally it is very small it is woody and at maturity it shows a single stalk single filament bearing a single stamen with the two anther lobes so obviously the anthers are basically fixed 
That is, they are fixed at the base on the filament. They are dithicus. That is, they are having the two walls, and the dihys longitudinally. That is, they split open not through the pore, but they split open by the slit, vertical slit, and that's why the dehiscence is longitudinal dehiscence. Very interestingly, the anthers which are present, oh, sorry, the pollen grains which are present, the pollen grains are having the smooth exine and very thin in time, and they are very light in color. Now, a very large number of pollen grains are produced by these stamens of the male flower, and because of that, because of their lightness, these star, uh, these uh, pollen grains, they are carried away over a long distance. With the current of wind, obviously the pollination is anemophilous. Similarly, as the male flowers are born in a catkin inflorescence, in a spike inflorescence, the female flower is born in a dense spherical head. Now, head, I suppose you have studied the inflorescence, just like capitulum in uh, family Compositae, it is a head inflorescence where it is having a central conical. Compact thalamus, along with the female flowers are arranged. But the female flowers are always within the number of five to fifty by zero. Each female flower it is having again a single bract and a pair of bracteoles, very similar to the male flower. But very interestingly, in the female flower, the perianth is totally absent. So there is no any perianth lobe at all. There is no any rudimentary lobe, lobe, lobe at all. On the contrary, at the base of this pair of bracts, the gynoecium is present. Now here the ovary is bicarpillary sin carpus superior. So ovary is bicarpillary. It is contains two carpels which are united together. It is superior, but each carpel is unilocular. Each carpel is you know, it contains a single locule with the two ovules on parietal placenta. So here the placentation is parietal. But dear friends, the beauty won't stop here. The beauty of this female flower is that in each female flower, out of two carpels, only one carpel is function functional, and one carpel is rudimentary. म्हणजे दोन कार्पेल्स असतात पण दोन कार्पेल पैकी फक्त एकच कार्पेल फंक्शनल असतो दुसरे कार्पेल हे रुडिमेंटरी असतो इट बिकम्स स्टराइल सिमिलरली द फंक्शनल कार्पेल इवन दो इट कंटेन्स टू ओव्यूल्स आउट ऑफ दिस टू ओव्यूल्स ओनली वन ओव्यूल इज फंक्शनल एंड वन ओव्यूल इज स्टराइल म्हणजे खऱ्या अर्थाने बाय कार्पेलरी सिन कार्पस या सिच्युएशन मध्ये चार ओव्यूल्स तयार व्हायला पाहिजेत पण प्रत्यक्ष त्या प्रत्येक फुलामध्ये फिमेल फ्लॉवर मध्ये ओनली वन ओव्हिल इज प्रेझेंट वाय इन इच फ्लॉवर इन इच लॉक्यूल वन ओव्हिल इज अपॉर्टिव्ह अँड ओनली वन ओव्ह्यू इज फंक्शनल सो अल्टिमेटली फ्रॉम द फंक्शनल पॉइंट ऑफ व्ह्यू द गायनेशियम बिकम्स मोनोकार्पेलरी युनिलॉक्युलर हॅव्हिंग अ सिंगल ओव्ह्यूल ऑन पर्यट प्लस इंटर सो फ्रॉम anatomical point of view it is bicarpellary sin carpus superior unilocular with two ovules on parietal placenta but from functional point of view it is unicarpellary or monocarpellary obviously superior unilocular with a single ovule on parietal placenta obviously this ovule is orthotropous which is a typical character of gymnosperms in this case again each flower it has got two free styles the styles are long they are uh, thread like and they are colored so when you see the color of the female flower it is not the color of the flower but it is the color of the stamen and because of that the female flowers look red in color so that's why when we are talking about this family casuarinaceae you will realize that the flowers are so small so minute that you have to use the microscope to study them the flowers are represented by very simple characters 
they are present in the woody bract stony bract and there is no any perianthoma at all there is no any calycin corolla at all and only male flower if at all there is a male flower it is represented by a single stamen and if it is a female flower it contains only a single carpel with a single ovule having two free styles obviously i have written that the carpel is abortive and it is suppressed now this is how a picture shows it's a drawing or a diagram you can see very clearly now let us start discussing this diagram uh, you can see the twig and on this twig you can see the at the center you can see the twig on this twig you can see the linear scaly leaves which are present and what we see green it is a stem cladode now towards the left side at the center again a vertical image is there and this vertical image shows the presence of catkin inflorescence that is male inflorescence and you can see the white uh, sorry you can see the yellow flowers at this top now on the same figure at the bottom you can see that exactly at the bottom left side a single male flower which is having a single bract and pair of bracteoles and it is having a single stamen at the center similarly if you come to the top on the right side you will see a female flower now this female flower is growing if you want to move the details just come down again and you will see at the center exactly at the center a single carpel which is having two pair of bracteoles and a single bract and it is showing the two styles two free styles which are coming out and they are green in color so this is a typical structure where the female flower is represented by only the carpel and it's protecting never in the form of bracts and two styles with a single carpel whereas the male flower is represented by the single stamen so this i will be sharing this diagram to you so that whenever you want to get the details you can go through and you will let you know uh, you can prepare yourself now we were discussing about the female flower let's go ahead it has got a style two linear styles are there obviously they are style and stigma you can separate it out they are straight and simple i told you that uh, this plant is following the wind pollination anemophily now anemophily <coughs> means this plant is dependent on nature and not by any other insects for pollination obviously when the fruit is formed as the plant is growing in a dry area xerophytic area it is indehiscent samaroid nut that means hard stony and samaroid means which is having the aggregation of female flowers together so the female flowers they dry out the bracts come inside come together and they form a samaroid that is it is having the many female flowers come together in a dry form and it is a nut so obviously the fruit is indehiscent the seeds obviously they are non endospermic with the straight embryo as i told you the embryo is orthotropous it is said as embryo now when we talk about uh, this family why we are studying this family or why this has been included in the syllabus first of all i will uh, Uh, bring you to uh, some of what we have learnt in uh, TYBSC, and then we will again discuss further. We have studied in TYBSC and SYBSC also the classification systems. The classification system, which was proposed by Bentham and Hooker and Engler and Quantum. Now I am interested in bringing your attention towards the. Engler and Prandtl system of classification. Now, Engler and Prandtl, these two were German taxonomists, and they believed 
that the proposal which was made by the Eichler that the evolution has taken place from simplicity to complexity and accordingly they arranged the families. So they found that, that Eichler and later on by Engler and Prandtl, they found that there is one group and this group is called the Amintiferi group in records. Generally this Amintiferi group is nothing but it is the unisexual group which has been treated by the Engler and Prandtl, uh, by the Bentham and Hooker and also Daphnes by Eichler. So this, these are the names which are represent different genera. But amentiferi is a form of the inflorescence, amenti inflorescence. So what is this inflorescence? This inflorescence says that it is a petalous catechin inflorescence of the dicots. That is the perianth is absent, only bracts are present, the flowers are sessile, and the inflorescence is always drooping. The flowers are very minute. So the simple flower, a single flower represented by a single stamen. So this particular group is called the Amentiferi group. And this is represented by several families of the unisexuals of Bentham Nuka. Now this Amentiferi group, the name which was given by the Engler and Prandtl, which was representing the single flowers, reduced to flowers, Sassile flowers, perianth less flowers, they considered that this is the most primitive group of angiosperms. And so they call this as an amentiferi, as the most primitive family among the angiosperms. So what they contained, this amentiferi, it was containing the simple flowers without any uh, much more complexities. They were containing naked unisexual minor flowers. Naked means they were not having calyx and corolla around them. And they were having the unisexual flowers. That the male flower was separate, female flower was separate. And these flowers, they were minute in size. Then most of the time, the flowers were woody. They are not colored. They were never fleshy. The flowers were obviously, they were incomplete. But they were generally protected in the bracts and bacteoles. Obviously, that told me that the period was absent. And very interestingly, the male flower represented only by a single stamen. Many of times in other genera or in other families, the number of stamens may be higher, but they were reduced and others were stamina, others were staminodes. And only one fun functional stamen was there or fertile stamen was there. In casual music, there is no any staminode at all. Only one stamen is there and it is fertile. Again, again, in the next case, the female flower, it is a bi or tricarpillary ovary and each carpel is unilocular with a single ovule on basal placenta. So this was an assumption of Eichler and Engler and Prandtl school, it's called the school. And they considered that the Amentiferi is the most primitive group among the angiosperms. They also considered that this is one of the most primitive group of dicots. So from this Amentiferi group, all other members they have evolved and from other members, the monocots have evolved. And because of that, the Amentiferi from phylogenetic significance point of view is very important, uh, say group. One has to study when we are studying the phylogenetic significance of the angiosperms. Now, very importantly, these reproductive organs, the flower shows a very wide range of reduction in number of characters as well as in progressive suppression of the characters. So if at all the perianth is present, the perianth may be present in the form of rudimentary lobes. It is not a proper perianth at all. There is no any calyx and corolla at all. There is no any proper even bracteoles also. They are present in the form of a rudimentary scaly structures. And that's why the whole Cajurinaceae family, it represents or it shows a very wide range of simplicity in its characters. It shows a wide range 
in simplicity in its characters. Now let us come back to the figure now. You will find that such a type of simple forms, simple characters, they are represented even now the structure, the female flower structure is very close to the cone of equisitum. We can compare this. Even the male flower can be compared with the cone of inflorescence, uh, cone of the equisitum. Because do you know that in equisitum also, if we take a section LS, we will find that a pair of microsporangia are present. And this pair of microsporangia, the ciliate spores are present. The spores are coiled, ciliate spores are present. Here also, in this pair of anthers, you will find the pollen grains are present. And that's why it is very similar, very close by its anomaly, arrangement, which is very close to equisitum. That is obviously what the equisitum, equisitum is nothing but the tetrapoint. So the angiospermic plant, it is showing very primitive close characters with that of pterodophytes. And that's why the family Cajuranesi was considered by the Angleran plantle that it belonged to the group Amentetheri and this was one of the most primitive families of angiosperms. Now then we will come to this slide. Now let us see to the lower section of what I have written. The Eichler placed Amentetheri, the most primitive group, so considered because of the highly reduced characters and the same trend was followed by Engler and Pantu. I think we have discussed this. But this particular approach, that simple flowers, this approach was called as an Englerian school. And last time we have studied about the Renilian school. What the Renilian school was saying? The Renilian school was suggesting that the flowers are bisexual, there is a presence of perian, again there is a presence of calyx and corolla, androsium and gynesium. Then it is a typical flower and the flowers are arranged on a conical thalamus. Obviously they are having the laminar stamens and free carpels. Flowers are bisexual. In this case the flowers are unisexual. The male flower is separate and the female flower is separate. And there is no any laminar stamens at all. Even later on, in the beginning of the 20th century, one of the Swedish taxonomists, Rendel and Wittstein, they compared this family and suggested that this family might have derived from the advanced gymnosperm Ephedrisi family. I suppose you know well. The Epidrisi family is one of the family of three orders, uh, of three uh, families of the order Nitales. So Nitales is a gymnospermous group, highly advanced group, and one is Nitales, another is Epidrails, and third is Velvet Chiels. So they derived, that Cajone C has been derived from gymnosperms, and that to be Epidrisi in particular. This particular school continued up to the mid of the 20th century. But with the advancement of our developmental biology, with the advancement of the anatomy, the advancement of the characters in developmental biology and embryology, it was realized that the simplicity which is exhibited by the casualty and many other members it is not because of the it is not because of the simplicity and in the primitive character primitiveness but the simplicity has been acquired because of the progressive evolution that is initially the amentifere members or other members they were bearing the typical perian lobes but slowly, to make the things simple, they have reduced their characters and they have become simple. It means 
that these plants they are much more advanced than other members and because of that the cadurinaceae family today by almost all others either by the hutchinson or conquest or takaja or smith or even the latest uh, agp system the cadurinaceae is considered as one of the most advanced family of dicots because it is showing the high reduction and this reduction has come through evolution process so the simplicity is not it has begun with but it has end with and because of that from this phylogenetic point of view it is very important for we all to study the family cadurinaceae dear friends this family when we are studying at every nook and corner now we have to study the floral parts and their arrangements in terms of the microsporangia and megasporangia of pterodophytes and of gymnosperms so you will realize that the single stamen character which is exhibited by the cadurinaceae family or the male flower of the cadurinaceae family it can be compared with a single stamen which is represented in nature i suppose you might have studied and you must have collected the nitum male cones in nitum male cones also there is no any perianth lobe but the bract is present the bract is pentamerous cat and it is woody it is dry and it is arranged again on catkin inflorescence and this particular single bract it contains a single stamen so you can just imagine the structure of the male cone of nature and one can compare this male cone of nature or male flower of nature with that of the cadurinaceae similarly you can compare this female flower with the simplest character of hephedraceae where the megasporangium it contains a single megaspore and from megaspore a single obviously at the end a single ovule is formed and this single ovule what we can call in the ephedra it is containing two free separate styles they are called as a micropylar lamellae so this micropylar lamellae in ephedraceae and this female structure which is having a true free styles they can be compared as an analogous to each other and that's why the cadurinaceae members or the cadurinaceae family members and the nitales members they show very parallel characters similar characters and these similar characters it is because of the parallel evolution remember nitales group is also equally advanced group among the gymnosperms and because of that the nitales shows several characters which are very similar and close to that of angiosperms we do know that even the leaf of the nitum is very similar to leaf of a angiosperm back on angiosperm similarly in the floral characters also if we compare the bracts and their positions the floral arrangement is also showing a parallel evolution with that of the arvas nitales so the nitales and the cadurinaceae they were compared as the probable ancestor of angiosperms and this theory was forwarded by wittstein rendel and wittstein they forwarded a theory concerned with the origin of angiosperms and they considered that from nitales group that to also particularly from the ephedraceae group the cadurinaceae group evolved the cadurinaceae group evolved amentiferi group evolved and this amentiferi group was the most primitive group of angiosperms from where from all other angiospermic forms they evolved one thing was sure that eichler and even engler and prandtl they believed that the monocots are more primitive than the dicots 
particularly in Zen Pantu, when they revised 23rd time their classification system, then they suggested that the dicots are more primitive and monocots are more advanced. Because in earlier classification system of the Englishman Prantal, the Englishman Prantal, even they have placed the gymnosperms in between the dicots and monocots. But later on, they made the correction in the revisions in classification and then separated the dicots, they separated the gymnosperms and they treated the gymnosperms as a totally separate group, a primitive group, than angiosperms. So all these corrections they have made in the Anglerian school, Anglerian school, and uh, today we assume and we accept that the Cajurnes family is one of the most advanced family among the angiosperms. Now we will be studying some of the members or some of the families in our coming lectures. Just we have started our lecture with the Cajurnesi and we will be studying few more families like family Moraceae, the family Piperaceae, the family Urticaceae, which are showing the same basic character. The flowers are very simple, the flowers are very minute, the flowers are unisexual and the, they are containing either the single stamen or a single carpet. So the simplicity is prevailing in this particular group and this group is called the Amentiferi group and that's why at the MSc level from taxonomical understanding, better understanding, these families have been kept for study. So with this details, today we will stop our discussion. The topic is open for discussion. You can ask me the questions. Not only you can ask me the questions, even you can uh, type the questions in your chat box so that I can read and I can answer. Now this is the main trend of Amentiferi which will be continuing for few more families we are supposed to study in this group uh, in MSc. I suppose uh, I am reaching out to everyone and uh, everyone is following it. Obviously, I will be sharing these slides to you through Patil Man.